Welcome back to the Chad HD Show, News Talk 95.1 FM and 790 AM, KFYO. Joining us on the phones, the uh, National uh, Press Secretary uh, for the RNC, Blair Ellis, uh, joining us here on the Chad HD Show. Blair, welcome to the show. Uh, how are you today? Good morning. Thank you for having me on. I'm thrilled to be with uh, you and your listeners today. Absolutely. Glad to have you on the program uh, today. You know, it, it just seems like every single day, uh, the the Democrat Party, uh, or as I've called them here on the show, the Democrat Socialist Party, uh, it is is moving even further and further and further to the left. Uh, you know, the uh, I guess the big takeaway within the what the last forty eight hours is uh, now you have more and more of the twenty twenty Democrats embracing uh, changing the elections uh, here in the country and doing away with the electoral college and uh, also embracing packing the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, <laughs> tell folks uh, your reaction and just the, the the RNC's reaction to what we've seen over the last you know forty eight seventy two hours and longer about what we're seeing from this uh, from these uh, twenty twenty Democrats. I know it's wild when you start to kind of hear some of these proposals and things that these Democrat candidates are supporting. It just makes you wonder how far how far left and and why have they gone so far left in the last couple of years? Uh, you know, it, it used to be Bernie. Sanders, it was kind of this extremist in terms of like his, his liberal ideology, his, his thoughts, and now it's the whole party. The whole party is with open arms embracing these um, these insane far left politics, uh, you know. And, it's, and, it's, and they kind of espouse these as they are out on the trail, talking about abolishing the electoral college and and packing more justices on the Supreme Court. And and apparently now they're all open to lowering the voting age to sixteen. Um, some would argue that most sixteen year olds shouldn't be driving, let alone uh, let alone vote. Um, and so it, it is just kind of crazy when you start to really think about the landscape and how far left these candidates are pushing. Uh, they're certainly out of touch with mainstream America, and they're certainly out of touch with um, with with you know what what we, what's working, what policies are producing. We see how good the economy is doing, and uh, I think voters would agree that we're on the right track right now under President Trump's leadership. You know, when looking ahead to whenever we get to the 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 debates between President Trump and whoever uh, the the Democrat nominee is going to be, I'm sure the electoral college will come up uh, because it's it's being discussed now. It's going to continue to to be discussed. What is the Republican answer? What why should we continue to roll with the electoral college here in the United States? Well, for starters, you know it was established for our four our forefathers to make sure that some of the smaller states or, you know, especially those in the Midwest um, have a voice that, that those people aren't just discounted um, because they live in a state that's not as populous or that's not as large. And so I think the electoral college is pretty critical to making sure that every voice everywhere is heard. Um, otherwise we'd only ever have presidential candidates visiting states like California or New York. Um, and, and Texas is a wonderful state, but we want, we want our, uh, we want candidates in, in every state, every Every American has a ch- should have a chance to hear from their presidential candidate um, firsthand. And, and if we were to abolish the Electoral College, we would certainly um, allow some of these larger states to kind of run right over the smaller and or the more Midwestern states. So it's an important part of our democracy. It's an important part to making sure that every voice counts and that every state counts. Every every person should matter. Yeah, and, and this is something that, you know, to, to those who I, I think are, are – educated on this issue and pay attention to this issue. I think they get it. Uh, but, you know, the danger is there are a lot of people who just go, well, a popular election sounds good to me. Yeah, that, that sounds great. Uh, and, and what's funny about this to me is, is that you have all these Democrats who they're all aiming at Iowa, right? The Iowa caucuses, right. none of them would visit Iowa uh, if we went to a popular election. No offense to Iowa, but none of these folks would be going to Iowa, Correct. Totally. And, and if you, you know, if you were to abolish the college, you know, the electoral college tomorrow, we'd only ever see candidates camp out. And, and, and like I said, in some of those uh, states like New York or California or Florida, um, in an effort to run up their popular vote totals. But the co- electoral college really forces them, it requires them to move around the country, especially to the smaller states. Um, who's kind of have a handful of electoral votes that could tip the balance. And it, and it makes sure that, you know, our candidates are aware of issues that matter in different states. You know, the issues that matter on the coastal areas like California um, or Florida are going to be really different from issues that matter for people in North Dakota and New Hampshire and Iowa um, and, and, you know, in Nevada. And so that's really why we've got to keep the Electoral College in place. It's, it's kind of just anti, you know, democratic 
to, to suggest otherwise. Yeah. Visiting with Blair Ellis uh, of the RNC, when earlier, I think it was CNN, actually, and it probably pained them to do this. Uh, they, they had a a, uh, a poll came out that said 71 percent of Americans think we're, we're, we have a great economy or a good economy right now. They have positive views about this economy. Uh, as far as the RNC goes, as, as we get closer to 2020, how big is that? Is the state of the economy uh, for not only President Trump, but for the down ballot races and for uh, the chances of taking back the House? It means a lot. Uh, we all know that the economy is certainly a driving force. It's what motivates people to get to the polls. Um, and because, you know, CNN, as you said, found 71 percent of voters thinking our economy is in good shape. That's the highest approval since February of 2001 in over two decades. I think if CNN is pushing out numbers like that, they've got to be true. Um, but I think it goes to show that people, the vast majority of Americans, agree that President Trump is handling our, our nation's economy in the right way. Um, at that same poll, notably, also showed that Democrats' trust in the free market is increasing. And I think that that should serve as a wake-up call to a lot of these candidates that are pushing for these socialism, kind of socialistic policies right now, because that runs direct contrary uh, to that of this laissez-faire, you know, free market notion of, like, let's let the government, or let's keep the government out, and let's let the markets do as they will. Um, but now that 7 in 10 Americans have more trust in the free market than the government, that's up. That's up from t- 2011. That's significant. And that should really be something that sticks and resonates with these Democrats that keep saying, you know, free government-funded everything, whether it's health care or government-funded jobs, et cetera. That really, uh, this poll is starting to show a shift in trends, and I think it needs to wake some of those Democrats up. Yeah. Uh, visiting with Blair Ellis, uh, Ellis, the uh, National Press Secretary and spokeswoman for the RNC. Uh, Blair, when it, when it comes to some of the other news that, uh, you know, the, the the RNC is trying to get out there about the president and, and about the Republican Party and about what the Democrats are wanting to do, what are some of the things that are not being covered right now by, by the media that you think should be covered? I think, uh, you know, I think right now the CNN poll certainly helped to kind of push that narrative up in the mainstream media's uh, eyes, at least. But it truly is the economy. I think when you start talking to Americans, you start talking to the American people, you get out of kind of the D.C. the D.C. bubble and you stop thinking about what the pundits and the pollsters and the supposed experts are saying. When you talk to the real people who matter everywhere else around this country, everyone feels as though we're in a better place than we were four, five, six years ago under President Obama. I think it's very tangible. People feel the effects of this economy doing better. We saw GDP grow 3% from um, 2017 to 2018. That's the fastest growth in 13 years. To date, we've seen you know almost 5 million jobs created under President Trump's leadership. Unemployment rate has been at or below 4% for 12 straight months. Those numbers, those facts don't lie, and and the American people are taking note. And while Democrats are going to try and badmouth the state of the economy, they're trying to kind of, you know, find a way to to push a a fake narrative that it's not doing well. When you talk to people, the American people, they feel differently. They have a little extra money left over in their pockets. They have a little extra money they can put aside for a rainy day fund, for a vacation even. And that is what matters, that the American people feel as though they're in a better place now than they were before Trump took office. Blair Ellis, National Press Secretary for the RNC, thank you for joining us today. And uh, we'll visit with you, I'm sure, uh, a few more times before 2020 gets here. I would love that. Thanks so much, Chad. Thank you. That's Blair Ellis with the uh, RNC here on the Chad HD Show.